it be nice if there was a way, especially for us as natural health practitioners, where we could get an insight into the individual constitution of the patient that we're looking at. And this is exactly the sort of, uh, of information that iridology can give us. It's based on that idea of constitution and it works in a couple of different ways. On the one hand, we recognise that individuals with different coloured eyes have different basic constitutions. These are broad categories, of course, and um, we wouldn't want to make too many generalisations on that basis, but it is the case that people with blue eyes have a very different constitutional management system, if you like, than people with dark brown eyes. We can plot that they are each individually um, prone or susceptible to different types of diseases and different uh, pathways of diseases. So that's where it starts. And then we start looking at the texture of the iris as well as the colour. We can also look at what we call the fibre structure, the tissue structure of the iris. If you've ever taken a close look at an iris, you'll realise, first of all, it's a very complicated structure. And secondly, if you compare one with another, that they can actually vary a lot from individual to individual. So we get a lot of individual variation when we start looking close up at this structure. The other way that it works is through what we call the iris reflex chart. There's a very simple version of the iris reflex chart up on the screen here at the moment and you can see um, by the writing on the chart that it describes the placement of various organs. The re reason why we call it a reflex chart is the old idea was that there was some kind of reflexological connection between zones in the iris and the organs in the body. This remains to be proved. But it has been the case that many uh, iridology researchers have noticed distinct correlations between markings appearing in certain locations in the iris and the appearance of disease within the human body. For the last 160 years or so, um, iridologists have been making these observations and working towards what we call the reflex chart. This is a very simple version. As I've said, there are much more complex versions uh, available. But now we come to a, a situation where everyone pretty much agrees, all the iridologists in the world have come to very similar conclusions about these particular organ positions, as we call them. And it enables us to make an assessment not only of the individual constitution on a sort of a, uh, a basic general level, but also looking at individual organs and assessing the level of strength, of resistance, of vitality, possible accumulation of toxic byproducts that we haven't eliminated. All of those things which might be crucial to indicating why one person gets a disease and dies of it and the next person comes through with no problems at all. So this is really what we're doing here. We're performing an individual analysis. Um, the theory of iridology runs very deep. Uh, there's a lot to learn. Uh, but at its simplest level, it puts something into the diagnostic method, the diagnostic process, which perhaps other diagnostics don't. It allows us to look at each individual in a truly individual fashion. The iris is considered, it's actually now known, to be a genetically derived pattern. And as such, of course, it's going to tell us about our individuality. So I hope that uh, you'll join us as we research this uh, subject in more depth and get to know how to use it to add to our naturopathic diagnosis. Mm -hmm.